Nope. Hello everyone, today's video is on the three basic sounds of djembe. Now today djembe is played widely all over the world. Uh, it is being applied in contemporary music, in drum circle, as well as traditional djembe classes and djembe communities. What I'm going to show you today are the three basic sounds of how it is to be played on the djembe. We will be exploring bass sound, tone sound, and slap sound. Okay, you ready? Jinbe bass. That's it. Looks easy, right? Now the key thing here is center of our palm onto the center of our drum. Now, in most of my beginner classes, students tend to put their fingers together, but I will encourage you to relax your fingers actually because our hands, or rather our palm needs to be relaxed. Key thing here is and this part of our palm needs to meet the center of the drum to achieve that uh, full bass sound on our djembe. Okay, now take note, these are the wrong position to play our bass. Nope. No! Now, the djembe I have here is a, I will call it a moderately tuned djembe. So bass will sound like this. This is how bass sound like on the djembe that is not tuned. This is bass played on a djembe that's tuned to a very high pitch. Usually in my classes, when we learn djembe rhythms, I will ask my student to sing bass on the right hand, boom. Left hand, goo. All right, these are the common uh, syllables that I will use. And later on, this will be useful for us to play a certain rhythm, which I will demonstrate for you later. Next, we're going to look at the tone of the djembe. Now, there's two parts I want you to look at. First, we will look at uh, how we should land our hand, or rather our palm on the drum. Second, we will look at how we should swing our forearm to achieve a, a decent momentum to produce a nice tone sound. Now, first of all, our fingers should be close up together like this and our knuckle bone rests just outside the edge of the drum. As a guide, look at the circle of the drum like a clock. So we place our right hand at the five o'clock position, fingers pointing to center of the drum. Thumb is always outside, okay? Knuckle bone shouldn't be inside because if it's inside, you'll be hurting your knuckle bone because you'll be hitting it against the wooden edge of the drum. But we don't want to place it too far out as well. Sound will be very thin. So, right here. Watch again. The second part we want to look at is how to swing our forearm down. So, do take note, elbow is fixed. We move our forearm up, all right? We do bend our wrist a little bit, okay? And swing down. If we don't bend our wrist, we will playing like a robot, which we do one. And if we don't move our forearm, only wrist, there's not much uh, weight or intensity in that momentum as well. So a combination of forearm and wrist. Now, I understand there's a lot of technical explanation here. So, put it simply, hit it like you will hit an ant, or mosquito. That's it, you have your tone sound. Now, usually in my class, I will ask students to sing right hand tone as pe, left hand tone as te. In some Jimmy community, they sing both hands as tu for tone. Tu tu. Another detail here that uh, most students uh, may not be aware about playing tone or producing a good tone is this. When we land, all right, how our palm anger plays a significant role in uh, whether you're going to produce a good sound or not, okay? So, uh, what I would suggest is 
your palm has to tilt a little bit to, towards you, inwards, okay? So that the intensity of your uh, tone is emphasized on your middle finger and your index finger, okay? But of course, that doesn't mean that we're gonna play tone only with these two finger, okay? It's just that to anger our palm more towards like this rather than like this. I will show you the difference. When it's anger like this, sound, it's not consistent, sometimes you get a flat sound. But if you anger towards like this, the consistency of the tone sound is better. Now this is a tone sound on a moderately tuned djembe. This is a tone sound on a djembe that is not tuned. This is a tone sound on a djembe that's tuned to a very high pitch. Next, we explore the slap sound of the djembe. Now, the slap sound is played at the same position as the tone sound. So what makes the two sounds different? The key thing here is in how you place your hand. So let's take reference from our tone. Now, this is tone. Three steps, we move into the position of our slap sound. First step, release your fingers or open up in this way. Second step, tilt to almost a 90 degrees angle. Okay, and then next, just move slightly up a little bit so that your knuckle bone is not against the edge of the drum. Okay, this is to prevent injuring yourself. So at this position, we also want to make sure our thumb, all right, is outside of the edge because we don't want to be hurting our thumb against the edge as well. Now, when we play slap, this is where our hand will land. And our fingers should be relaxed in such a way that when we hit like this, our fingertips will be slapped onto the drum. Now the slap is a technique that takes uh, practice, all right? Uh, and you can only get better at it. Now, one thing to take note, all of us have different hand sizes and also we are playing on different drum. So, what I've just shown you is basically a, a general guide to playing drum. Now, for some of you who may have a, a larger hands or longer fingers, all right, I would suggest that you move down a little bit, okay? And it also depends on the type of drum that you are playing, if the edge uh, is a nice angle that fits to your hand. So, the bottom rule is we don't want to be hurting our hand. No bones against wood, all right? No bones, no any part uh, of your bones hitting against any part of the wood on the drum, all right? And the contact point should be only center of your palm and fingertips. Now, we're going to compare the slap sound on different types of drum. Drum A on a moderately tuned djembe. Now, slap play on drum B, a djembe that is not tuned at all. Slap on a djembe that's tuned to a high pitch. Usually in my class, for slap sound, I would ask students to sing ta or ka, okay? Now, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what types of uh, vowel words you use for bass tone and slap, as long as the three different sounds are distinctively different from one another. The three basic sounds of djembe are like the vowel words for the language of the djembe. Now, for example, as we speak, Maybe, uh, if our vowels A, E, I, O, U are not pronounced uh, clearly, then we won't be able to express ourselves uh, in a clear way. 
same thing. Every traditional rhythm, okay, based on the three different sounds, has its own intended musicality inside. So if your three sounds are not clear, then the intended rhythm wouldn't be able to express clearly. A very simple example of a rhythm putting all three sounds together will be a rhythm we call kuku, a very popular rhythm in most Jinbe communities. Boom, pete, ta, boom, pete, ta, boom, pete, ta, boom, pete, ta. So imagine if playing this rhythm without uh, a clearly uh, defined bass or tone or slap sound. It will sound like this. As compared to... The same cuckoo rhythm play on a uh, jimbe that is not tuned. And the same cuckoo rhythm play on a jimbe that's tuned to a very high pitch. Another example for you where we combine bass, tone and slaps together. So likewise, if your bass tone and slaps are not clear, it's going to sound only like this. The same rhythm play on a jimbe that is not tuned. And the same jimbe rhythm played on a jimbe that's highly tuned. And then there are certain sounds in traditional jimbe rhythms where we combine two sounds together. Okay, for example, this is a combination of bass and tone and then bass with slap. Or we also have sounds where we combine two of the same sound together, like two tone or two slaps. One last option we have is we combine tone and slap together where in one instance you hear both tone and slap but kind of happens one after another. Now I will show you an uh, example of a few rhythms where we can hear a combined sound in this uh, rhythm phrase. So one such rhythm is called an goron. It goes like this, one, two, three, four. Same rhythm, play on a jimbe that's not tuned. Same rhythm, play on a high pitch jimbe.
Another example is a rhythm called Le Coulet. One, two, three, four. Same rhythm on a djembe that is not tuned. Same rhythm play on a high pitch djembe. Now the djembe is one playing surface but three different sounds we can produce on it. Uh, although there's only three different sounds, there are so much configuration we can get from these three sounds in terms of rhythm phrase, in terms of solo phrase, there's just so much vocabulary for us to explore. What do you think about this video? Is there any question you'd like to ask us about tone, bass and slap and the rhythms that you may have encountered that, uh, that's challenging for you that you want to consult here? Tell us in the comment segment, okay? Or simply show us some love. See you at our next video.